This lesson about the universality of neural networks will talk about the Universal Approximation Theorem, a mathematical theorem for artificial neural networks that states that if given any accuracy level and any function that we need to approximate, there is a neural network that will approximate this function with the required accuracy level we were asked for in the first place. Let's go to the classic example of recognizing people on photos. You have here a photo of the sympathetic Morgan Freeman and we know that if we give it to a neural network trained well enough, like the one used by Facebook that tells you if you want to tag a friend or not even if the photo were not uploaded on Facebook before. So we have a neural network that takes the pixels of the photo as inputs and gives us as an output the answer Morgan Freeman. To simplify the problem even further, let me imagine that at the last layer I have a Morgan Freeman neuron which outputs a probability that the given photo at the input is a photo of Morgan Freeman. So imagine a neural network that only recognizes Morgan Freeman. And let's state some claims that are quite intuitive. So if the network is well trained and we give it a precise photo of Morgan Freeman, it will give us an output that is very close to the real one, which is if the photo is an actual photo of Morgan Freeman, the answer would be 100%. If the, the photo is not a photo of Morgan Freeman, the correct output should be 0%. So th this, would be, this would be the precise answer. And this was an approximate one. The claim is that with the neural network, we'll be able to approximate this precise function that recognizes Morgan Freeman. This network itself is made of only linear combinations. So we have here weights, which are co coefficients for each pixel. Each neuron will sum all the weights of all the input pixels and put all of this into an activation function that looks like this. So it's a somehow threshold function that says yes for values in this area and no for values in this area or precisely that says almost yes, almost no and something in between. here. And the other layers will do the same. They will have sums coming from all the neurons and they will put them into their activation functions and so on until the last neuron that will give us this final answer. The first claim is that the network will approximate Morgan Freeman. The second claim is that it do it in a continuous way in the sense that if I alter a pixel, imagine we have a million pixels here, the consequence on the output is limited. So for small change in the input, I have small change on the output in the sense that if I have a photo that is let's say 1% close to the previous photo the output would be somewhere around 0.5 or 1% or something very close to the precision we got on the, on the, on the first photo. Now a fundamental question. Is there a function that given a photo as an input tells us by how much percent this photo is a photo of Morgan Freeman. Can we have an expression of it? For example, if we name the pixels 1, 2, 3, etc. So P11, P21, etc. Can we have a can we have an explicit expression that given pixels like this, we have some expression, I don't know, x11 square times square root, x21 times uh, log of the third pixel, etc. And this would be the exact function to compute Morgan Freeman. Unfortunately, we don't have this. There is no explicit function that takes pixels and outputs a probability that this set of pixels represents Morgan Freeman. If there was, then recognizing photos would be an easy task because if you know the explicit functions, you can just approximate with the, the things computer can do like Taylor series or Fourier series simple approximation tools. So we do not have an explicit function that does this task, but from this example we have a feeling of what should this implicit function be. It should be a continuous function that goes from the space of pixels and arrives to the interval 0-100% and for a given set of pixels tells us what's the probability that, that those set of pixels represent Morgan Freeman. And the advantage of the feedforward model of neural networks is that it gives us an easy way to compute an approximation of this function 
by just linear combi combinations of activation functions of linear combinations of activation functions of linear combinations of the pixels. This has the advantage to be explicit and we would have as much sums here as there are layers. And almost at the end, what the universality theorem tell us is that whatever function that is continuous, starting from unbounded input space, the space of images, for example, there exists an explicit approximation of f up to any given accuracy level we can fix in the beginning. So if you want a function that does this with an error of 1%, there exists an explicit weighted sums of activation functions, of weighted sums of activation functions, of weighted sums of pixels that computes this implicit function with an error of 1%. And moreover, what people like Sibanko and Kurt Hornick in the late 80s and early 90s is that given any accuracy level, any function, of course a continuous function from a bounded input space to a bounded interval, just, just to be brief, we say any reasonable function, there exists a feed-forward neural network with one layer, only one is enough, that approximates f, so we call this function f, with that accuracy. And by the way, Kurt Hornick is one of the developers of the R programming language. He was not just a, a good theoretician, but also a, an influential developer. This is one of the most important theoretical foundations of neural networks, of the feed-forward mode of neural networks. It says why they work. And another important thing to know about neural networks is how to train them. So how, how do we find this? So we have an existence guarantee. So this theorem gives us an, an existence guarantee and it tells us that only one layer is enough, but it doesn't tell anything about how to build networks. And to build networks is another challenge called learning, which we'll explain in another way, video. And it's worth noting that learning was experimentally performed by the backpropagation algorithm years before we had this universality theorem that tells us why neural networks actu actually are universal approximators.